uh, first of all uh, i'd like to place my heartfelt gratitude to uh, dr gautam and team the kolkata usr team for this opportunity and when um, this topic of interpreting the seminal analysis came into my uh, session and probably that i decided to speak on it um, i can assure you that uh, it is nothing what you had assumed to hear here uh, i want the session probably whatever i have compiled in this particular uh, presentation is experience of over 40 years of uh, interpreting seminal analysis and um, more than technical i think probably i want you to think over it ponder uh, what you see through my presentation and probably understand and take few messages which i strongly believe will help you in your regular practice so obviously 40 years is not my experience <laughs> uh, from my father dr kiki gopnathan he he always has this concepts which i believe strongly needs to be uh, propagated and talked to talked about first of all uh, i think probably one of the most important factors is that why do we do a seminal analysis probably i think this is something that i do end up seeing a lot of patients still uh, when they come in for an evaluation uh, the female is fully thoroughly evaluated including hst even laparoscopy also but a basic seminal analysis is never done so i think a basic seminal analysis should be one of the most pertinent or the first investigation done need to be done uh, in any patient and why do we need all these uh, criteria we have been having who in uh, it started all the way from uh, i think 1980 i think probably the year that i was born to uh, even till 2020 where we had the 6th uh, edition of uh, who analysis and probably what are we gaining with all these uh, uh, these criteria probably it is just helping us to standardize making sure that everybody kind of interprets the seminal analysis in a similar pattern so that when we talk about oat when we talk about astrocytosis sperm when we talk about uh, the different abnormality in the sperm we are all talking about the same things now what are we what is the whole purpose of a seminal analysis when a patient comes to us we want to know the quality and the quantity of the semen deposited inside the vagina when they are having sex that is what the whole pertinent idea of looking at the seminal analysis but are we right is the semen sample that has been uh ejaculated normally in during their sexual intercourse into the vagina is it similar to the quality of the sperm that has been ejaculated during masturbation inside the bathroom of your clinic or probably a semen collection room of your clinic is it the same again that is also a question that needs to be thought about now coming to uh, the different information that we get from we know the concentration of the sperm we know the motility of the sperm we know the morphology we know about if there is a presence of infection but there was lot of other information also that we get from a seminal analysis one we know that the 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 uh, there is a patency of the genital tract is there the ejaculatory function is we know that is normal so it these are additional information that we will get from the seminal analysis and almost 99.9% of the all our treatment entity are purely based on the seminal analysis report that we see we only have all these advanced semen uh, uh, analysis or semen uh, looking at uh, different dna fragmentation all those things in the coming years we are still i think probably uh, 99% of the gynecologist or the infertility specialist are still dependent on the semen and then came in when we are talking about the different uh, who ranges i think what you can actually see in this particular side slides uh, especially if you focus on the last two diagrams or last two charts are the difference between the 2010 and 20 do you think that much of a change is really going to change your management what is really changed actually 2020 semen analysis is only a continuation of the study of what happened in 10, 2010 the probably the only significant difference what they actually they added few more countries to me, but still not india uh, they added china because that was one of the biggest criticisms of to, uh, 2010 seminal analysis they said that it is not inclusive of the whole population so they added china also but they never took samples from india uh, but 
if you look at it now uh, will it really make a difference if the count is 15 million or 16 billion in your in your regular practice like i said the only probable difference or some significant difference that came in was the progressive mortality they talked about and in 2010 i feel that it was more sensible for these people to kind of differentiate between they said that there is don't differentiate between a rapid progression and a progressive mortality just write it together as a progressive mortality because a lot of people are sometimes very difficult for them to differentiate between a rapid progression how fast the sperm is moving and a forward progression so there is a lot of error while reporting a rapid progression progression and so they said let's look at this progression see it's like a basic example that uh, how many of the world population are sprinters if you look at olympics there are 10 people who are probably qualifying for are they the only best men in this world no generally men who are able to run reasonably well are all men sufficient to have their own children so if they are able to run reasonably well i'm not saying that they should perform they should have a 10 second uh, or 12 uh, 12 uh, second mark should not be there the thing of the thing but everybody should perform similarly but what happened in 2020 they again brought that emphasis back to rapid progression they all said that yes 20 uh, 2020 no you have to very focusedly do the rapid progression and like what dr sunil uh, jindal sir said very important see what is the thing that you should always understand here is that less than 5% pe- that 5 per- fifth percentile people are also making their wives pregnant it's not that fifth percentile below that there is no pregnancy it is fifth percentile of the people there are people who are having semen analysis below that particular levels also which are actually making their wives pregnant and like i said there is always a lot of demerits of the semen analysis who criteria yes only the fertile population were uh, counted the female factors are never evaluated see the people who made their preg- wives pregnant were taken now the people who did not make their wives pregnant now if it was the fault of the female we don't know so if we had actually ruled out a female factor also probably the semen analysis parameter might be further low it can be even lower so th- these are f- few things that we should always keep in mind while we are actually analyzing the semen analysis and one very important factor what i always talked about is whether there is sample the, see the how how is the sample reflect probably the psychological nature of the person who is actually collecting the sperm so collecting the sperm sample should be made very comfortable for the patient is a single drop see that is also probably one of the reasons see collecting uh, 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 the issues while collecting are probably one of the reasons why the semen analysis reports can be so variable from one sample to another sample is one drop of semen enough to analyze the whole report yes we are t- obviously that is the only way you cannot take your whole blood out of your body and count, uh, say that hemoglobin is so much yes there are always we always look but then it is very important that when you are talking about analyzing a single drop should make sure that the liquefaction is fully happened if liquefaction liquefaction is not happened make sure that it actually mechanically is done so make sure all those steps are understood and then only the semen semen analysis is done major challenge with the wrong reports is majority of the people if you look at you go give the semen they give you the report back in 2 hours or 3 hours majority of the labs so that is why it is important that it is it is analyzed in a lab which has got the expertise to analyze a semen sample report they understand the importance of looking at the motility they understand the importance of looking at the morphology see now to understand that you need to look at the morphology you need to stain the semen sample now staining the semen sample will take time technically the older times it used to take around 24 to 48 hours here we stay in and then that's when ma'am did talk about wbcs ma'am did talk about uh, immature germ cells how do we understand all that it's only by staining so if the sp- they are giving you a report in 2 hours and they saying that okay 90% normal sperms that is probably will be your report that is coming out it can never be enough and this is a very another interesting concept fertile to one woman and infertile to another now this was a question that we always think is it possible we know that there are men who have got poor semen samples they got divorce saying saying that uh, the has had the male had a problem but with the second wife they became pregnant faster 
See, there is this concept of uh, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and 3 plus 1 is also 4. So, whenever we look at any scenario, not necessarily the, both the partners has to be equally competent. Sometimes the female is so fertile, we have seen pregnancies in the worst of semen samples. We have seen patients with severe grade 4 endometriosis, severe uh, PCOD patients who ovulate once in six months getting pregnant because their sexual, uh, uh, sexual frequency is good, their semen parameters are very good, so actually the partner makes up for the other partner. Probably there is some logic to all that Jyotish and Kundali mixing and all those things. So there probably has some role for all those things because See, there are several of these factors, trying time, sexual frequency, cervical factor. Women are very important. So sometimes the f when the female factor is very good, they're so fertile that a sperm even just walks by nearby also, they get pregnant. And another big challenge that we always have is that semen does not give us an idea of the etiology. It just tells us that, yes, the semen sample is less. Probably we need to do further workup to understand whether what is the etiology of this semen. For example, like I think uh, 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 General Sir has actually, actually kind of covered the whole infertility, male infertility in his, the first session. But probably there are certain things where you know that you additionally start uh, analyzing if there is a, you know that it's a obstructive spermia, you do an ultrasound, you differentiate it between ejaculated duct obstruction, vascular aplasia. With all these things, our treatment does not really change. We still go for uh, aspiration and exceme. Different scenarios wherein we have an azuspermia. Sir did talk about hypo, hypo, uh, obstructive azuspermia, non obstructive azuspermia. See, it is just not about semen analysis. We know semen analysis is azuspermia, but we are using additional tests, tests like I think what Madam was trying to imply in the previous talk was basically the FSH value. Now, I think everybody said high FSH. What is high FSH? Is a question that everybody needs to think of. Now, what is a high FSH for a, ma for a female? Everybody accept it is 7? Means not that any, any value about day 2 FSH of more than 7 is considered to have a decreased reproductive outcome. It is the same for male. But if you look at the levels in the uh, report that comes, the report level what comes is always, it will be 2 to 14, 2 to 15. We know that that person has a FSH of 12 in a female, you know that her outcome is going to be very poor. Similarly, an FSH, uh, uh, I think it's American Society of Andrology, we did say that an FSH above 7 is also a sign indicating an impending testicular failure. Just like what we are talking about, impending ovarian failure, that ovaries, ovarian, uh, ovaries are subsiding. Similarly, the testicular function is also decreasing. So I think it is important that we analyze these small, small things. For example, you have a higher FSH, you don't keep waiting. I think that is what ma'am was trying to say. Don't keep on sending them, waiting for giving them antioxidants, giving them a lot of time, wasting a lot of time. The semen will keep on coming down, coming down and it goes for azuspermia. You need to intervene, treat them faster before it's all coming down. The presence of ejaculation, the presence of orgasm. Now a presence of, or if there is an, uh, we, there's always, the presence of orgasm always helps us in differentiating between an azuspermia cases where you, do, you whether you want to differentiate between an, an orgasm uh, and a retrograde ejaculation or com uh, absolute azuspermia. If there is an orgasm but there is no sperm that is coming in, you know that there's a possibility of a retrograde ejaculation. So you can actually analyze the semen. There are several things, like I said, once you stay in it, you'll be able to look at the the presence of uh, blood cells, you can look at the pus cells and all these will help us in actually differentiating or focusing our treatment on these group of patients differently. The hyperviscosity. We know whether that semen sample is having hyperviscous. Now is it repeatedly being hyperviscous? If the patient has been on some antioxidants, how do we treat these group of patients? <coughs> We know probably of the several reasons like some infections and uh, any kind of um, inflammations which can probably increase the possibility of a hyperviscous semen sample. The, similarly, the treatment also needs to be done accordingly. But understanding all its demerits, I think it's also important to understand it's still the best investigation. Keep all that in your mind when you're analyzing a report. Still, it will help us that to identify the male factor. 
the intensity of the problem can be identified and it is purely based on the seminal analysis report you are going to actually counsel the patient. So, but when you are understanding the report, please make it a point to understand that yes, there are so much, so many things that are hidden behind it. But yes, this is what we are going to talk to you with this particular report. And how, when I talk about a lot of these variations in the different kinds of seminal analysis reports that come in, uh, I think how do we make sure that these variations don't happen? One is obviously to make sure that the, it is being made comfortable for the patient. You have a good lab, a well-trained technician, focus on very important parameters like the count, motility, morphology, vitality, all those things need to be emphasized on. So do it in a good lab where, where they are giving you consistent results. And it's very important that a lot of people, husbands will come or probably they have some kind of insecurity, these men will come just immediately after marriage. They have some small sexual problem, they'll say like, let me just look at my semen. Unfortunately, their semen will have some OAT. Then that's enough. See, how much ever the semen sample is less, it's still important that you give them a time to trial. A trial to try for pregnancy is very important. So like I said, even the least sample you have seen pregnancies, even the best samples also we have not seen pregnancies. So when a semen sample report is coming, does not completely deny or tell them that you will not get pregnant or you will definitely get pregnant. You are having a higher possibility of getting pregnant, you are having a lower possibility of getting pregnant. That is the emphasis that we should always come in. So please always use semen analysis always as your base of management. Your algorithm of treating a patient should based on a basic seminal analysis and build on it by using other technologies. So that ultimately what you want is to have a live birth and always use the seminal analysis as a, uh, as a base, use additional technology and start doing your treatment for the patient according to the seminal analysis report. Thank you for your patient hearing and I, I hope and believe and trust that I have been able to at least uh, bring in some points which would make you think and probably go back and start using some of these things. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Parasuram, such nice elaboration. And uh, as I said earlier also before this talk, that semen analysis is very important and unfortunately it is not given that due importance which it has to be given. And as rightly um, uh, um, explained in the lecture by Dr. Parasuram that this semen analysis needs to be done in our own facility or at least means as far as I know till now a routine practicing gynecologist get the semen analysis done from an ordinary pathology lab where the collection is done in some, uh, some, some kind of bathroom or uh, some facility. So this everything makes it very important. So this is very nicely um, elaborated uh, talk uh, about this semen analysis and everyone should uh, have the understand this importance of this semen analysis. Uh, of course, uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, I think Dr. Parshuram can. Uh, just, Dr. Parshuram, yes, uh, you should just uh, highlight about the background data because uh, until and unless you know some background data, it is difficult to interpret the semen analysis report. Very, very true, very true. Yeah. So basically, like, uh, see what here probably we were looking at or emphasizing is probably I think lot of you seniors will be able to uh, to kind of uh, uh, kind of come out with what you've heard and be able to relate to what I'm talking about so that's why I thought it's important to understand that and analysis by two technician or two andrologists yes yes that's what I, I like I said no I did not want to really come out and talk to about the regular yeah, yeah. things that we are talking this. It is a nice presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. So, I mean, we should just, uh, the take home message is that those semen analysis tells us about the further management of the male infertility. It does not tell us anything about the occurrence of pregnancy. Okay. And when the semen analysis is normal and there is no pregnancy within a stipulated time. So, that I think we need to think beyond semen analysis and when then that is the role for the sperm function test. And which one and 
what it's a totally a different a lecture different but lecture. then i think uh, that's very very important yeah and uh, to my belief still i i i can uh, tell when you see a report when an ordinary gynecologist see a report analysis where it is written uh, the sperm morphology is less than 4% it is very hard for them to believe it and i still remember uh, one uh, incident i would like to quote here i was conducting a workshop with uh, dr daniel franken is not no more so one of the participant has written normal morphology 60% and it was so surprising for him that oh you, you this must be a superhuman superhuman kind of thing 60% normal sperm in a semen sample that that is something unimaginable so this is really very hard to uh, accept that yes this is the actual figures 4% normal sperm morphology is there in a normal semen sample so thank you uh, doctor yeah, yeah. Uh, just just to add on the morphology i think whenever we a patient comes to us and say 4% they are shattered most of the patients are shattered when they see 4% and it is very difficult for us to kind of convince our patient that it is okay see how i kind of explain to a patient is just see just like if you see the number of people sitting in the room everybody will have a different height everybody will have a different nose sometimes will have a bigger ear but as per kruger all of them are abnormal but not necessarily they are normal so Uh, it does not give us but then when the abnormality is so high probably it will say up to 4 percent is considered normal <laughs> so i think that is the information that you should always mm. pass on to our patients 